the early game, the 3 o'clock start, and the Chiefs are 7.5-point favorites as well. And, you know, we'll start with the Titans and the Chiefs. When I look at this game, and I was listening to R.J. Bell today uh, on with the guys from 10 to 1, he brought up a really good point. He said, you're asking the Titans to win four straight road games. He said the NFL never schedules a team four straight road games. It's too difficult. He also brought up that what Derrick Henry has done just isn't done. And to have that many carries and that much of a workload for another week, he, he, he expects that there's going to be a little bit of a drop-off. Now, the Chiefs actually lost to the Titans earlier this year. But I read several stories today uh, in, in The Athletic, and they said everybody says that, you know, with, with Derrick Henry, keep the ball out of the hands of Patrick Mahomes. And, and a lot of the guys that I read said that's not necessarily the case. The Chiefs still have to get the ball. And the Titans have to make sure that every time they have an expanded drive that they do score a touchdown. Because although the Titan defense is going to be better than what the Chiefs faced last week, the Chiefs are still going to be able to put up a lot of points. And I think that Tannehill is going to have to have a game. He has not had a game. He has not had to. He has not had a game in the last two weeks. Is he going to be able to put up big numbers? Because they're going to, I think they're going, to have, they're going to have to score about 28 points to even think about beating them. Uh, I would think so, Michael. I mean, this is really a tall order. The one thing that you can't ignore is that Kansas City has really struggled historically in these situations. And Andy Reid has, has as well. Correct. But putting that aside, running the football, to me, is only important when you're protecting a lead. If it becomes a shootout, which occasionally it does with Kansas City, you go back to that great Monday night game last year against the Rams, you go back to the game uh, earlier this season where it just against Houston within the playoffs, how are you supposed to, to hang with this team that can go out there and on five plays score a touchdown, and then you're going to ask Henry to do something that hasn't been done in 10 years, logically, and that is to run the ball 30-plus times three straight weeks. That, that'll, that just does not happen. Yep. So if, if the Titans get a lead, I can see them running the ball, keeping it out of the hands of Mahomes, but if they're going to exchange points... Eventually, Tannehill's going to have to get with the program and start throwing the ball. You just can't, you know, play four corners football, get a lead, and just kind of milk it. Eventually, your quarterback is going to have to throw to get a first down, start to throw to score some points. And I just don't know if the Titans are equipped to do that in Kansas City where you know that the Chiefs can just stumble into 24 points. And R.J. Bell also mentioned another thing. He said that, you know, his people um, have put together a statistical analysis, and they consider this year's Kansas City Chiefs team mm -hmm. the best team of any NFL team in the last five years. I know. this Where they are right now. Well, and, and really, the Titans, it's kind of a Cinderella story. And you know, they didn't destroy anybody. I mean, they, they beat a team uh, in New England that was not the New England Patriots that we know. And it was impressive that they, they knocked off the Ravens, but they didn't destroy them. The fact that the Ravens lost was the big deal, but the, you know they well they, they were up they, they started off up fourteen nothing. It looked like they were completely run away, right? And and then the Ravens did hang somewhat close, and they they were in range, but it was a dominant performance. There's no denying. Right. It. But you can be what you want when you're up four two scores like that. You're up fourteen nothing. You yeah. can kind of dictate. Well, policy. and especially well that that's the key, right? I, I we would all agree this because from what I'm what I'm gathering here, the we all sound like we have a similar leaning in this football game. If anyone picks Kansas City at seven and a half, would you agree that if you go down ten nothing or more to start that game, you're very concerned you're not you're not covering. I'll tell you one thing. A ten point lead with Derrick Henry, that's gonna be very tough. You could, I'm not saying you can't win, but a deficit against a team that can run the ball like Tennessee is a problem. You do not right. want to be in a hole um, against um, Derrick Henry. Unless you can force turnovers. But and that's what happened when they lost to them in the regular season. The Chiefs turned the ball over. So they've got to play cleaner football. Andy Reid can't become championship weekend Andy Reid, where he's only been to one Super Bowl. I think he's lost four championship games. So, I mean, if you're betting the Titans, you're betting, you're betting on Cinderella. And you're all, maybe you're betting the Titans and go, it's going to be a tighter game, maybe a backdoor cover. I, I wonder how many people out there really think the Titans have a chance to win this game. I just wonder. I, I was I, I thought about it, and I think there'll be game. I don't think this is going to be a blowout cover. 
I think they're going to. I think Kansas City is going to win by about ten points. I don't. I don't see them blowing out Tennessee. I, I think this is a really tough. You know they. They remind me of the Giants in some ways in terms of the run they're putting together. And if they somehow were to, to get to the Super Bowl, wouldn't, wouldn't you guys agree, though, the NFL playoffs are weird? And even though we, tennis, uh, Kansas City is clearly the favorite, with the way the NFL is, you can picture Tennessee somehow ending up in the Super Bowl. It's a very Super Bowl-like thing to happen. Mm -hmm. That you look at that... You, it we, would be a giant-like run. It would be a giant-like run. And you look back at 2020 and go, remember when Tennessee ended up in the Super Bowl? They did it once before. I mean, granted, that team was more loaded, at least on paper. But... I wouldn't be shocked if they somehow won, but it does appear that this Chiefs team is in the zone. And I love, I love the way they must feel coming after. Not only did they win last week, but to go on that 51-7 yeah. to seven run to end when the game. When they were down 24 to nothing, they had a 6% chance of covering, according to Vegas. Which is high to me. I know. You're surprised it's even 6. But 94% that they were not going to cover. And they, they covered easily. Ease. You knew basically by halftime they would cover. Um, but I, I think I think it could be a nail biting cover this week. It's such a Tennessee's on this great run, but here's the problem that I have with the comparison of the Giants' runs in 07 and 2011. Yes, the Giants were able to run the ball. Yes, their defense put pressure on the quarterback, and their defense played well in those games in the playoffs. And they were road warriors, with the exception of that home win against Atlanta in 2011. All the games were on the road, but. Their quarterback can make a play. Eli made plays, right? Is Tannehill going to make a play? I would think at some point this game is going to be in the hands of Tannehill to make a play. Can he do that? There, uh, I think he can't. Listen, he's what is he eight and three as a starter, nine and three as a starter since taking over for Mariota. But in the, in the playoffs, he hasn't been asked to do it. I think Kansas City will present an opportunity for Tannehill where he's going to have to convert on a third and 10 from his own 20-yard line. Otherwise, they're going to give up the ball. He's going to have to make a play. But Dom, I have a question for you, though. If, if, De if they go on to win the Super Bowl, how much does, the, does Derrick Henry and the Titans winning shove your Saquon argument right up your, you know what? They don't have a receiver. They have one receiver who has 52 receptions. A.J. Brown has 52 receptions. They, they pound the football 1,500 yards a season from Derrick Henry. So, yeah, but their stat, like, Gettleman gave out a stat that the top four passing teams didn't make the playoffs. That's the top four passing yardage teams. You have to have the threat of a pass. The top seven teams with the top seven quarterback ratings all made the playoffs. Oh, I so agree. you have to have a really but they proficient do have the quarterback. They do have the threat of a pass, and Tannehill's been good. Right, but but like you can't just have Walter. You but you can't, have, you can't deny you that. You can't have Barry Sanders and get to the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. Not if, you're, not if your quarterback is Rodney Pete. Right. No, apparently not. But it, with this team, as presently constituted, there's no doubt if they were to win, Derrick Henry's the MVP of everything. Right, well, He's but, the reason they would win the Super Bowl. All right, a couple of things at play here. Number one... If it was so much about Henry, then what did they bench Mariota in the first place for? He's making all that money. And Mariota's numbers were not bad when he was benched. Yeah, you look at his QB rating, it was not awful. So the quarterback still has to play well. Of course. Maybe, maybe not in the two playoff games, but again, if this team's, I guarantee you, if this team wins a Super Bowl, Tannehill's going to have to have a game. He's going to have to make this a This might play. be the game. All right? this, yeah, I this. think this is the moment. If they win this game, it's not going to be Tannehill throwing for 78 yards right. and Henry rushing for 220. He's going to have to make a play. He's going to have to do some things. And also, Henry's different than Saquon. To Michael's point true. with Barry Sanders, That's true. I can give Henry the ball, and he kind of just moves the pile. He drives it. Saquon is a, a cut and slash and speed guy. That's why I didn't understand what Gettleman said. you got to be able to run when it's cold and, and the muck and the and mire. Punch him in the face. Listen, I love Saquon, but he's not the kind of guy that's going to you know, just run the ball every time, just right in the middle when there's no holes well, and, and drag Saquon, people down. Saquon will give you a drive occasionally. Where he sets you up, you run him on first and second down, and then you're at third and 16. How often does Derrick Henry right. set them up for a third and, and 15? And, and, and people always rip me about, I mean, I love Barry Sanders, but the pedestal that he's put on, there are a lot of no gain, no gain, but, no gain, 28 yards, no gain. no. That's not Derrick Henry, as Don said. Derrick Henry's he's you're getting going huge and, chunks and I, of yardage. I, I love Barry Sanders. He was a non-entity at the goal line. You couldn't use him, Right. Because if they put eight men in the box, he's not driving through a non-hole. The other thing is there were certain games. They're going to Lambeau, and it's, it's zero degrees outside, 
and the and it's icy and it's snowing. No Barry Sanders because you can't cut that way. Yeah, and, and it's actually it's the difference. It's even though I always as a kid, of course, I revered Sanders so much more than Emmett, but Emmett was so much more vertical. You know, he went he went he went straight to the hole. Barry danced back there, and and you're right. That is the difference with Derrick Henry. He is moving forward constantly. I, I think that. The Chiefs, if they're going to blow out Tennessee, then they will slow down Henry. Like they'll keep him to about 100 yards, not 180 or something like that. And the Chiefs are not great against the run. They're much better against the pass. But Spagnolo's a pretty good defensive coordinator. They could come up with something. You, you're not going to stop him, the old Dan Patrick line. You're going to hope to contain him. Don't let him go off like he's gone off in the first two games. Let him get his yards, but contain him. I think that they could do that. If he has a huge game, I still think the Chiefs win. It's going to be close whether or not they cover seven and a half. I have a, I have a crazy, I have a trivia question for you. Um, do you know how many yards Derrick Henry has through two games? Like 390? 377, yeah. I think. It's ridiculous. Do you know how many touchdowns he has through two games? Just two, right? One. Yeah. How crazy is that? That's why the, the things I, that I was reading today... He is not as much of a factor in them winning those games as you think. He, well, he, did not, he did not account for the offense. I mean, their defense has played a big role as well. Obviously, Tannehill's only thrown for 77 and something like 88 yards. It was just, just so insane. they might just have, as Don would say, they might just have the Kavorka. They, just, they might have it, all the, uh, the mojo going their way this year. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, but they just haven't faced in the two playoff games as explosive an offense that Kansas City brings to the table. Right, Baltimore's very good offensive team that ran the ball a lot. But were they, they had they had a great MVP quarterback. But are they are they are they going to do what Kansas City did last week? No, no, that's not that. They have six straight, but, they, but not but, that way. But, you know, it, it just it's a great story. I'd like to see it continue. I really would. But this I'd, is a this is a tall order, man. I don't want to see it continue. I want to see Kansas City in the Super Bowl. I want to see Pat Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Why would you want it to continue? Because I, I do like underdog stories. Yeah, but, right? but think well, about then look at Andy Reid as the underdog. You have the he right. He needs a Super Bowl title to be a Hall of Fame. You have you have every right, Don, to root for the underdog, and I generally do. But I'm with Michael in this case. I don't want one of those Super Bowls where the only person who thought it was good was Trey Wingo. I want <laughs> Kansas City in the Super Bowl. I want touchdowns in the Super Bowl. I want to see Patrick Mahomes play. You know, it, 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 that conversation, you, you guys educated me to the other day because I wasn't old enough to really appreciate what was happening with Dan Marino. Dan Marino gets there early and thinks he's going to have more chances. And then you don't. We never we we act like Patrick Mahomes is going to have a Super Bowl team around him forever. He, he he might be the greatest quarterback of all time, and this might be the only time he's there. So you don't know. It's the, been nine years since Aaron Rodgers had a chance to win a Super Bowl. He's thirty six years old now, too. So Mahomes, my God, the last couple of years have gone fast. Not Mahomes. Oh oh oh, Rodgers got it. This portion of the Michael K Show on ninety eight point seven ESPN is brought to you by PC Richard and Son. Get ready for the big game. With a new TV from PC Richard & Son. Buy it today and PC Richard & Son will deliver your new TV tomorrow for free. Big game savings only at PC Richard & Son. Did you see Kyler Murray uh, was talking to a, a newspaper in Arizona and said, yeah, the, I'd like to play both sports. Well, it really hasn't going to happen, Kyler. So the Cardinals are going to give you the first four weeks of the season off? Baseball's not going to let you play in September? What happens if that team goes through the World Series? You're going to miss eight games? You're going to do what Deion Sanders did? Just miss the games on Sunday? I don't think, it, I don't think it's workable. I really don't. No, of course not. Neither team's going to want it. Neither sport's going to want it. All right.